Last Monday, we spoke about the vanished island Bermeja off of the Yucatan Peninsula. And then on Friday, we covered another mysterious island in the Hudson River. Well, today, we're going to be covering yet another island that may or may not be naturally created. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our producers and our Patreons. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about Floating Eye Island. Argentina is a country in the southern part of South America. It is the largest Spanish-speaking nation in the world. It is the second largest country in South America, only second to its neighbor, Brazil. Argentina saw its first European explorers around the year 1502. And the name Argentina first appeared on a Venetian map in 1536. Although that name would not become official until a presidential decree in 1860. This is because Argentina had been a Spanish colony until the 19th century. Like all of the countries on the America continent, Argentina is a melting pot of indigenous people, Germans, Spanish people, and Italian people. Now this connection to Spain will become important later on in our story. Buenos Aires is the capital city of Argentina. It's also the largest city in Argentina, a city full of culture, nightlife, cafes, and political upheavals. 17 miles north of the city of Buenos Aires is the Parana River. The Parana River feeds into the Parana Delta, and the Parana Delta is one of two deltas in the whole world that do not feed into an ocean, but a river. For many of the communities in the Parana Delta, you can only get there by boat. Of course, this adds a lot of mysticism to the area. The Parana Delta is also notorious for UFO sightings and what the locals call Luz Mala, which translate loosely as the lights of the dead, due to there being an indigenous burial site near the Parana Delta. In the year 2003, on Google Maps, a very mysterious island showed up. Because of the nature of the Parana Delta, not many people are able to move through the delta. So the likelihood of this very mysterious island being man-made was low. Now, in nature, there are such things as flotons or suds. These are what appear to be islands that magically show up in the middle of a lake and tend to float around the lake. It's like the islands aren't grounded into the earth beneath the water as we see with most islands. These flotons or suds are vegetarians that, again, have lost connection to the earth. So like a bumper car or rather a bumper boat, these islands tend to move around their little lakes. As they hit the side of the bank, they start to round themselves into what might appear to be a perfectly round shape. Now for this floating island in the Piranha Delta, many people believe that this is what happened, that this is just simply something that happens in nature. However, with Floating Eye Island, as it's now called, it seems to be geometrically perfect. And in 2016, an Argentinian film director named Sergio Nusfilm 
decided to look for a place in Argentina to film a movie about paranormal phenomenon. What better place than the Piranha Delta, an area that's known for paranormal phenomenon? It was at this point that Sergio really noticed this mysterious island and decided that he himself wanted to go there and look at it. It took about two trips for them to get there. The first trip, moving through the nature of the Delta, was unsuccessful. But when they got to Floating Eye Island, not only did they, yes, notice how perfectly rounded the island was, but they also noticed that, again, it rotated on its axis around this tiny canal that was hosting it. Now, as I said, floaters do the same thing. They bounce off the lakes, which is why they appear round. But again, this island is different. It's perfectly round. And not only was it perfectly round, but the water in the canal was cold and clear. Very different from the marshy surroundings. Sergio's team also noticed that underneath the canal, the floor of the canal, was hard and solid. This is also very, very peculiar in a marshy area. We have marshy areas all over the world. Most of you watching have probably been to a marshy area, if not live by a marshy area. You know that marshy areas are muddy and soft and dirty. This, however, again, was very solid. Many people believe that the eye is a sign that God still exists. How could something so perfectly shaped and odd be created by anything other than God? However, others believe that there is a more sinister story behind Floating Eye Island. Many UFO enthusiasts or truthers believe that this is the opening to an underground base. Some believe that this base was created by extraterrestrial life that tend to visit our Earth. Others believe that it was created by the puppet masters, the powers that be that rule our world, who have a lot of underground facilities. I, for one, agree with them. I do not believe that this island is a floton. I spent a few days looking at all these different flotons, watching documentaries on the scientific explanation of these floating islands. And in my opinion, Floating Eye Island in Argentina is very, very different. For starters, a lot of the other naturally floating islands don't already have a reputation for being ground zero for paranormal activity. We also don't see the change in environment around the other floating islands. For example, the water around the islands isn't any different than the environment outside of the lake or the river that holds the other floating islands. Whereas, again, with Floating Eye Island, the water seems to be very, very different. So why Argentina? If Floating Eye Island was created by sinister beings, why did they put it in Argentina? Now, before we talk about the country of Argentina, I just want to say again that the governmental powers of each country have absolutely nothing to do with the people. I believe that most people on this earth are good people. At the end of the day, regardless of our cultural heritage, our race, our gender, whatever, we're all humans. And most humans look at other human beings as human beings. In fact, in my opinion, it is the people of countries that make the culture beautiful. And Argentina is no exception. The dark times of the Argentine history really have nothing to do with the people who inhabit the land and everything to do with the puppet masters who've all treated us as pawns. Most people know that Argentina has had a very tumultuous history, especially over the last couple of centuries. And many people know that Argentina became a safe haven for a lot of the people who were fleeing Europe who had aligned themselves with the Axis powers of World War II. At the end of World War II, many of the powerful people that had aligned themselves on the wrong side of history needed a place to escape to. The Nuremberg trials were coming up, and for many people, this meant life or death. 
during World War II, the country of Spain remained neutral. Spain had just undergone its own civil war, so it was rebuilding during the time of the Nazi occupation of Europe. Due to Argentina being closely tied to Spain, Spain became a stepping stone for Axis powers to escape Europe and into Argentina. During this time, there were two escape routes outside of Europe. One again was through Spain and the other was through the Catholic Church through Italy, all taking people down to South America. The president of Argentina at this time or rather, the dictator of Argentina at this time was a man named Juan Perón. Juan Perón was a great admirer of the Germans in World War II, and he happily accepted those fleeing Germany with open arms. Yes, it's true that in the last month of World War II, Argentina did declare a war on Germany. However, we now know that this was a bit of a rouge. This allowed Argentine officials into Europe to go ahead and start the process of helping these Axis powers escape. We now know that most of history is a rouge, and we have to look underneath the stories told to try to suss out the real truth. Argentina also owns sovereignty over a part of Antarctica. The Antarctic Peninsula all the way down to the South Pole creating a triangle is part of Argentina's national territory. We also know that geographically speaking, Argentina is very close to Antarctica. We also know through previous studies we've done on this channel that the Axis powers were very fascinated with Antarctica, especially with people like Maria Orsic. I'll place that video down in the description box below if you missed it. Even though Floating Eye Island wasn't really discovered until 2003 with the invention of Google Maps, I personally suspect that Floating Eye Island has a lot to do with Argentina and its ties to the Axis elite. We know that across the globe, many shenanigans happened at the end of World War II, including Operation Paperclip, where many scientists were brought to the United States and Russia from Germany. We also know that the invention of Operation Mockingbird took full effect as well. Operation Mockingbird became the ultimate propaganda machine, Propaganda that had already started during the reign of Adolf Hitler, when he himself and his party took control of all of the media outlets and the news. As most people know on this channel, it appears that World War II never really ended, it only just shifted. And as we see today, there is a rise in the power of the Axis in a new form. In my opinion, Juan Perón was placed where he was placed in Argentina in order to help the growth and expansion of the Axis powers. This helped their expansion and growth on the Earth, as well as spiritually, too. And I believe that Floating Eye Island has a connection to all of this. Now, many people have tried to raise campaigns to go down and do a full, full research project on this island, but every time a campaign is started to raise money to do this, for some reason, the fundraiser is shut down. Juan Perón, the dictator of Argentina during the time of World War II, would go on to leave his mark in history. And the reason why he was able to leave a big mark in the history books wasn't necessarily because of him, though, but because of his wife. We will explore her story on Friday. But as far as the mysteries around Floating Eye Island, what is your opinion? Do you think this is just a natural occurrence and there's nothing weird around it? Or, like me, do you believe that there is more to this story, more to Argentina's shadow government and its shadow history, more connected to Antarctica and the Axis powers of World War II. Again, this has nothing to do with the people of Argentina. The people are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This has everything to do with the puppet masters of our world. Leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there's a link down in the description box below. And thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you all this morning. I hope that you're having a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.